And here we are, once again. Ethan. How very exciting. Super chat catch up for... I've listed this to myself as the extra credits EFAP. I think it's the one regarding, um, uh, what was it? The, the never do like character species or, or races that are like just evil. Remember it's the one mm -hmm. that like everyone hated. They've done a oh, few of those. Oh yeah, but, yeah, that's right, the, yeah, extra credit. And I think they even tried to argue at one point it's just bad writing. Oh. I think they yeah, it's just, it, writing, they did say it's um, bad writing. It's which... bad, it's bad. It's bad well, writing and you're lazy you as a writer if you do it. Yeah, especially something that incredibly broad and without backstory or explanation. It's not only bad writing, but it was, they said it was lazy and that it was like low key racist. And I was like, Jesus, fucking calm down. I don't even know that they said low key. <laughs> like they were, uh, they were saying some stuff. That got rid of loads I of trouble. It wasn't quite low key. Wow, well, yeah. yeah, that one, that one was, uh, didn't go over well. No. no. Which is kind of funny because I generally like when you give the the evil, you know, I, I kind of prefer it when it's a little more complicated than that. But I mean, it's not like a fundamentally broken idea to just have a flat out evil faction. I just, uh, well, we would have gone over in that stream. There's, there's so many elements to. Depends on the world building, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's neither. A, it's neither a, a necessarily good or bad idea. It all comes down to execution. Um, I'm not sure which order this is. I couldn't quite oh, tell. Boy. So we're either doing these from the end to the front or the front to the back. I, I I'm don't sure know. We'll it will become clear as we go. Yes. Uh, your heart's out. We can end this. That's, that's one of the best lines from one of the greatest movies of all time. Do you guys remember that? I do remember Suicide Squad. Oh god, that Suicide Squad! Yeah, it took me a while. It's like, the audience need to understand the stakes. Uh, they cut her heart out, that means they can kill her. We gotta have Rick say that. <laughs> he just grabs Will Smith and he's like, Her heart's out! We can end this! God, the movie's terrible. Uh, there are 40k sub-factions that are genuine good guys. The Yanmari? Yanari, sorry, the Lamenters, the Farsight Enclave, to name a few, they just aren't any good nations slash races. I know nothing about 40k. Nothing, I got nothing I don't know you. enough about it to, yeah. Heresy, the Tau deserve to be purged. More 40k. Yes. Um, if long videos means there's something wrong with you, then there's something wrong with Red Letter Media too. Oh yeah, I mean, there's some of the original longers. They introduced a lot of people to the idea of making a video longer than five minutes. You're reviewing something. It was horrifying to a lot of people back then. But efforts have since gone as far as making ten-hour videos. You know. I'm sure yeah. if you put all it of it is their, one um... of the. What was that? <laughs> I was gonna say if you put all of their Picard reviews in order, that probably amounts to what, like six, seven hours, something like that. The season? I guess, probably, yeah. It's almost probably like that's way too long if you're just trying to tell people you don't like a thing, gosh. I seems arbitrary, but No. Written in stone by some guy. <laughs> some guy just went out to a rock <laughs> carved in. Your videos can't be longer than this. <laughs> All of them. Any any of them, regardless of the topic. Yeah. Um, will you ever read Super Chats sent during premieres? I, uh, so the Boba Fett ones, I collected them all up and we did them in one go on a, on a catch-up stream. I figure I'll do the same for Kenobi. As for premiering my, like, main channel videos, and obviously whatever those guys, if they do that, they, they can make their choices too, but I tend to respond in the live chat. I'll at the person and be like, thank you, and answering the question. That's how I've dealt with premier Super Chats so far. Explaining a past super chat. If an orc can choose to be evil and attacks you, you need to fight him. If an orc has no choice in being evil and attacks you, he still needs to be put down. The difference is one of worthy of hate, the other only of pity. I suppose so. It's going to be down to a lot of factors, but yeah, you're still going to need to kill it if it's trying to kill you. Uh, I can't even remember exactly what the main issues extra credits took with the concept. I think uh, their thing was that to to suggest that there is an intrinsically evil race has uh, 
uh, connotations in the real world. Um, the problem the is, problem didn't, is that, which no one thought until fictional. they put that well, thought in their head. It's not equivalent. It's a fictional world. Um, and it's, and it's, but, but like evil is, it could just mean, you know, like a, a mosquito's evil. It's like kind of. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess it's the. Uh, it would be that um, there is like zero agency on the part of the evil race. They're just all evil, um, intrinsically. Um, I, That's kind of what I'm getting now, like, though. Like we've defined it. As evil, evil can mean a lot of things and can be fulfilled by a lot of things. Um, if someone well, said just... mosquitoes are evil, I could understand what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, I, I get what you mean. I guess, I guess the main one would be that you just, it's not real life. Like, drawing these parallels feels odd. Yeah, not everything in a work of fiction has some incredible, dastardly connection to the real world in some way. Mm hmm. Um, considering getting a Ruby fan to talk about Ironwood. I, I got I got nothing for either of those things, I'm afraid. Mola, which genius was your first run in EG2? Mine was Ivan. Everything was on fire constantly. Oh, Evil Genius 2. Uh, I think mine was, um, it was the scientist lady, the tech lady. I'm trying to remember who I went with. Well, because was... I think the other one was, like, basically Margaret Thatcher was one of them, and then the fourth one, I, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, yeah, I went with the. I think I went with Science Lady as well. I, I'm trying to remember. So the geniuses, yeah, there was basically the. I'm, I think Ivan was the dude with. There was there was Doctor Evil, um, like basically Doctor Evil, and then Ivan was like this general dude, uh, and then there was the scientist lady, and then there was Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, I um. The one I chose could, I think she boosted scientists in a yeah, thing that, around her, so yeah, probably, yeah. So that was, that was, um, Zalika, that was her name. Mm -hmm. That game was fun, I liked it. It was fun, yeah. Uh, see Bloodborne for what happens when humans and cosmic entities try to be friends. I'm not, I'm fine not understanding them. Also, hi, Mola Rags and Bringy. Hi! Hey. Yeah, it can go bad, you know. It can go bad. Um, thoughts on Godzilla vs. Kong? Hashtag Apex did nothing wrong. Hi, Rags and M. Oh, Hi. We <laughs> yeah, we still haven't seen it. We always intended to, and we now. will see it eventually. One day. Mm -hmm. And time goes fast, huh? Yeah. Um, Kami Kiwi Captain Carp Liebert Llama Anarch Ant. Okay. Oh, I remember Commissar Kiwi. I remember that. Hmm. <laughs> a little Kiwi with a little Commissar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is Andy Circus supposed to be Alfred now? Yeah, he was. He is. And Wish will be in future. In that movie. Yeah. Hopefully in the sequel. They spell his name as like Circus Clown. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're picking an animal for libertarians, it would be one that is a herbivore and likes to be left alone. I don't know if I agree with herbivore. Um, I think it would just be really kind of any critter that generally is, I guess, overrunned with stereotypes. Ones that aren't too social and just want to be left alone. They're very defensive. Hmm. Bringing a goose-stepping kiwi. Well, I'm not a kiwi. Well, I think that they're suggesting it to you. Oh, um, okay. I mean, the Commissar Kiwi guy, I guess, but... Yeah. You know, with some other ideas. Commissar Kiwi. You guys ever see the Daily Gondor spoof articles? If not, you should punch that into Google Images right now. It's great. I have seen some of those. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I've seen some. Yeah. Uh, Mola should be a maimed wolf, the long boys of the wolves. Yeah, they have uh, they have long limbs. Um, let me get you a picture here. Got me. Oh, here we go. That's a good picture. Makes sense, yeah. 
Makes sense. But you would look you you'd look more <laughs> <Wow>. like uh, <laughs> you'd look you'd be more like this. <laughs> Uh, Last of Us remake announced feels. Oh, show. right. No, 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 no. They're making a remake for PS5. I'm wondering if they're gonna actually if they're actually gonna have the the gall to change storylines. I think and they stuff will. I would to be try and make, if they make Joel Joel more obviously evil in the end. That's well, what my it, thought uh... went to. They because The Last of Us Two really requires Joel to be like evil when he isn't. So. From I think uh, something, I guess, from what I understand, um, it is in-house, so it's being made by Naughty Dog. It's not being outsourced. Um, it feels, uh, oh, and also it's a remake, so it's not a remaster. It's like a remake. Yeah, we're going to fuck around with Joel. Hmm. Um, I mean, that's... Uh, I... Uh, Hmm. I don't know, man. Like, does that game feel like it's old enough to warrant a... Re that game's less than 10 years old. Well, I, mean, I don't the, feel like... The technology, the mechanics in the game aren't even, like... They haven't advanced that far. Like, well, I, too. I mean, I feel like the, the clear one would be Final Fantasy VII. I can understand why you'd remake that. Like, that yeah. game was on PlayStation 1. The graphics were really rudimentary. Um, you can you can more... There, are, There is much more of a reason why you would want to remake that to capture the scope of that game. From what I understand about that game, um, The Last of Us, like, if you release that on PlayStation 5, people say, like, the graphics are a little dated, but, I mean, it still still looks pretty good. Yeah, still looks uh, fine. That game, that game looks good on, on, like, PS4. Like, it's it's Naughty Dog, uh... uh fuck, like, even if you wanted to remake Uncharted 1, it'd be like, you really don't need to, like... <laughs> you know, like it's 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 fine. Yeah, it, it, it looks, makes sense it if you fine. remade it, like the original Deus Ex or the original like like System Shock One or Two, things like or that. Even even PS2 games, like like if you remade, yeah, that yeah, that, PS2. I could I could at least see that. Of course, I don't want them to now, but like no, I can at least see that. Um, but like The Last of Us feels a bit. I don't know. That seems odd. You th you think that especially with the resources that would need, just just make a new game. Like just make something totally kind new. of yeah. Make it, a new it's thing. Been, well, well, it's been nearly a decade since their last new thing. So maybe the know. bean counters have decided that's more profitable. I don't know. I mean, they might be. I guess it's less of a risk. But like, The Last of Us was a risk when it came out, and it became like their best selling game. I think until Uncharted Four, and then The Last of Us Two did not uh, topple Uncharted Four. <laughs> On their best-selling game list. Um, yeah, I, I guess it's just it, it, it. It's not clear thinking about it. But it's like, yeah, The Last of Us was their last new thing, and they used to make new things really regularly. They'd have like a game per generation: Crash, then Jack, then Uncharted, then The Last of Us. It's like, oh, guys, come on, make some, make like a science fiction game or something. I don't know. Make a gamey game again. It's been a long yeah, time since you made a gamey funny. game. Make a game that's like a game. That would be, that would be crazy. Well, we, we, we are definitely, especially when it comes to seemingly PlayStation. Well, Insomniac still makes gamey games. Like, Spider Man is a gamey game. It's got gamey mechanics. And it's like it all the games I play are gamey games, I feel at this point. Because I just want to sit down and play a game. <laughs> well, I, I guess it's just, um, I, I think that I. Muller, would you say that God of War 2018 is a gamey game, even though it's still, you know, going for, like, the mm. cinematic stuff? That's, that's, that's one of those ones that's straddling the line. It's more of a game than The Last of Us is, as far as I'm concerned, but it's still yeah. in the realm of, like, man, this is very cinematic. Well, because God of War 3 is, like, that's a gamey game, yeah. for sure. That's still in that era. I guess it's just, um... You know, when you look at, like, like Devil May Cry 5's got its super slick cutscenes and hyper polished graphics, but, like, when you get control of the game, you're playing the game. They let you play the game. I just kind of want to... I, I feel like um, something happened in the 7th gen where it's like, no, you need to marry the gameplay with the cinematics. It's like, please don't. Just give give me the cinematics and then give me the game so that I can, like, you know, they're, they're clearly segmented parts where I don't get control stripped away. But, um, I don't know. I think, I think they still want to keep making games like The Last of Us 2. I think that's uh, the direction they're headed in. Damn. 
Um, if Marvel actually cared to make money instead of an agenda, I feel like a red Peter Skull clean your room bucko versus evil cap would be a success. It'd be funny as hell if they like leaned into the meme and had Jordan Peterson voice him. <laughs> they aren't orcs, they're Ewoks, Quentin told me. Oh no. Yeah, get it straight. Yeah, that was a weird part of that video from what would be probably early 2020 now. Um, Abyss is plane of origin for demons on uh, from D and D. Okay. The Abyss. Where the demons live. Hmm. Extra credits is making some disgusting judgments. Has he ever considered that being evil is just part of orc culture? Yeah. Yeah. Why is he so bigoted? Pretty fucked up. That's kind of weird. Question Mola. In some of your old Soma videos. You praise Sterling for his takes. How do you feel about his current content? Uh, Jim Sterling was fantastic back in the day at, at, at their best. Uh, super great consumer advocacy, highlighting lots of problems really Definitely early just, in their uh, development. Like Total Biscuit, you know, in that same sort of uh, camp of really pushing for more yes. of an awareness amongst gamers of the business models and, yeah, consumer advocacy, which is super valuable. Um, my steam just went off. I'm assuming you guys can see I can hear you, yeah. so I think it might I just could, be Oh, steam no, thing. Steam, Steam's steam gone off for me, too. It's no connection. Is it Wednesday, okay. my dudes? Uh, well, it's Wednesday over here, so... It might be, it might be why. Steam does a, a weekly little thing. Oh, so right. I, uh, yeah, we just crossed into Wednesday, actually, ten minutes ago. So it might, that might just be their quick little, uh, daily reset thingy. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, uh... I remember quite enjoying each gym position as they came out and found it relatively informative back when I was very uh, into just PC gaming news and stuff like that, uh, combined with old biscuit videos. Uh, these days I find it incredibly difficult to watch anything from that channel, um, fortunately. Yeah, uh, I haven't watched seems that like channel a completely in years. different person. Yeah. Yeah, which is fine. Channels can change and grow and stuff, but uh, it's. I'm not even sure if I'm still subscribed, but if I am, I'm not watching it anymore. Like, not, like, you know, out of spite or something. It's just like, I haven't wanted to just click anything. Yeah. yeah. Um... RFOO. Maybe we shouldn't tell the fans they're bigots if they don't like our movie. Disney kills him. Who's RFOO? RFOO? Nope. What they got there, yeah. Disney kills him. I do not know. It's been too long. I'm sorry. I don't get it. Um, that annoyed me in the Sith side of TOR. Every side story was just backstabbing and more backstabbing. No society can operate like that. Um, TOR. The Old Republic. That's probably it. Yeah, I never played probably. it. Uh, yeah, but, can, you know, a, can a society be too evil to live? It's like, yeah, probably. Like, yeah, if, if it's if it's built on everybody betraying each other, it's just like, uh, how does that even work? <laughs> how do you build anything? Yeah, I don't necessarily disagree with that, but like, obviously, there's a difference between a species, like an orc, and, and a whole civilization. Um. Reasonable First Order Officer, does this movie need to be four, four hours long? Zack Snyder kills him. He Asking reasonable questions gets you choked on the ceiling or whatever. That's Kylo for you. That's Kylo. <laughs> Smart lad. Oh, yeah. He, uh, man, he's just chopping things up, grabbing people. He can't it's make just up his like mind Vader. on what to do. Yes, that was what Vader did. Just destroyed equipment when he was pissed off. <laughs> That's Vader. I like how that's his only character trait, is just confused. <laughs> that's Kylo Red. I'm gonna put an end to this argument with logic. Orcs aren't evil because they're the orcs. Orcs are corrupted elves. You can't have a good orc because it's the process of corruption that makes them exist. Well, I mean, you're just talking about the world building. He wouldn't argue with that. He'd just say that that's, like, bad. Yeah, that you shouldn't have written it that way. I don't think that there were really many appeals to 
logic within the world because the problem is it's kind of hard to when you could just have any concept um, that explains why this is the way things are. Um, after people witnessed a real-life Odin, Thor, and Loki, would they not immediately convert to Norse mythology? They'd realize the Vikings were right. So, well, you'd have people uh, who would convert, but you'd also have people like me, Rags, and Fringy who'd all go, so they're aliens. They're not yeah, gods. Yeah, they're aliens, they're not gods. And it becomes a lot more complicated now that we have, uh, Egyptian gods, and <laughs> we're gonna have Greek gods. And yeah, the I Egyptian gods know... seem to be just, like, legit magic. And, well, and also, like, the ancestral plane, like, that's a place that exists, like, for real. So the, the, uh, mytholo like, whatever the Black Panther Wakanda religion is, is real in the yeah, MCU. Yeah, Bast is, like, a real god, I guess, and for them, doesn't, too. Um, doesn't, uh, Mark, doesn't he go to the, because Mark Spector is Jewish, so I think he goes to something that's akin to, I'm not super familiar with the religion, but he goes somewhere that field of wheat, I think that's um, part of the Jewish religion as well. So it just seems like any and all religions, like no, no religion really is going like, to be an afterlife, per se. They would probably want to not well, I, I deny know, anybody's at this point now. Well, I mean, that was, well, Elysium yeah. is the fields of wheat, right? Well, I guess that's what I'm saying, is I think the MCU just has a whole bunch of different religions and mythologies that exist at the same time. But they, and I don't know not, if you not, die. They're not ready to explore uh, yeah. how faith would change in a world like the Marvel Cinematic Universe that's filled with aliens, magical beings. Because all of that, if any one of those things occurred in... Like, if we found aliens, I feel like that is going to influence basically all religions, or like at least a lot of the major Some of them, certainly, You have to yeah. account for them. And, and then it's like, okay, you got aliens, and then you include magic. It's like, magic... Like, man, magic is, like, that causes things, you know, that you're going to have to talk about with a lot of religions. But yeah. I don't think... But it's it's Marvel. It's safe. Like, there's not going to be any exploration of any of these things. They'll just all coexist at once. Consider the um, um, the evil spirits dragging him to hell in Multiverse of Madness. Well, like, yeah. Are they, minute. like, demons from hell? Like, or are from they people hell? who... Are they aliens? Are they <laughs> you know? Cursed people who are the damned, you know? Souls of the damned? Is that what that is? What does it mean if you've got, like, the multiverse as well, you know? Like, how do you... I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. Marvel aren't gonna... Marvel can barely get, like, you know, walking from a building to another building straight, so... Good luck with them trying to solve <laughs> that. Yeah. Uh, $10 to hear the EFAP crew do their best anime girl sounds. No. Anime girl sounds? Go ahead and well, it would just be like that. short little anime noise, like. <laughs> it, that's that's just all it is. Kind of, kind of. So the two of us are just like, nah. And then you're like, you know what? Let me give them twenty samples. I have to make up for your lack of engagement. But uh, yeah. that's what that's what it is. It's it's just like it's a bunch of now. Imagine all those noises, but with close ups of anime eyes and the little like the lines, you know, what I'm talking about? all those little lines that go around in a circle around the outside of the panel that but that they sort of vibrate just a little bit as if to imply like stress or motion when nothing's moving. Do that. Does it not piss you off that Thor 3 makes Loki look like a dummy? No? Um, I, no, I, I, uh, I don't, because I remember that was, uh, that was one of the, I got a bit of pushback for saying that I think Ragnarok does line up with, uh, his journey overall. Um, because it, it's, it's, that film was essentially not, not like hugely focused on, but it's definitely like one of the core parts is just Thor coming to understand what it means for him to be, like, the king of Asgard. Because now he has to. You know, Odin's gone. Asgard's fallen. And so it's all just, like, re... You're gonna be the king, but in your own way. Like, that's kind of... That's kind of what they were going for there. Or at least it seemed like before Endgame, kind of. Yeah, I think... <laughs> yeah. As much as everyone praises the Infinity War scene, I think it's made better with Ragnarok's existence. I think so. I, I'm not really sure that that scene makes a lot of sense if Ragnarok doesn't happen, uh, and if Thor doesn't have what happens to him occur in that film. And we've gone over it before, but Thor does have a lot of subtle...
comedy lines that are quite fun uh, in his, even his opening appearances. He's a funny guy. Uh, he he doesn't... was just funnier in, in Ragnarok, much more Yeah, and, and you can argue he's breaking out of a shell to some degree. Uh, well, that's what Comedy's maybe that's how what he Ragnarok copes with a lot of situations. There's, I think that's what Ragnarok There's weird stuff in there, and nonsense stuff. Yeah. Like him getting electrocuted by that stupid device doesn't line up at all. <laughs> I, 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 it's weird <laughs> to me that they chose that. electricity as well. It's like, you really want to use that to subdue you Thor? Floopy poison. That would be the one to do. Or you find a way to leverage something, like something he cares about. Like he's forced to compete if he wants to X Y Z. Like maybe even get access yeah, like, to a ship, maybe, you know? Well, maybe you could find a way to have Sif in the story there instead of her just being absent and then back now. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, maybe that's why Sif wasn't on Asgard was because she was doing stuff and that brought her to Sakaar. But yeah, like there's issues I take, but like Loki. In that show, uh, in that movie, I mean, you have to look at it. He's defeated by Valkyrie in a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know if that would... It might count as evidence of him not being his top speed man because he should never even be in a position where he can... I've, I've talked about this before, but like, I'm even a little bit disappointed with his death to Thanos. I wish it was a little harder for Thanos to kill him. Well, because he is a god, um, yeah. Oh, oh, funnily enough, I wasn't even focusing on the god part, it's the mischief part that... Oh, he's a creature. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, like you... I want to be maybe. impressed with Thanos' uh, the abilities in his gauntlet that that counter the god of mischief. Like, that that would be satisfying. And there's a, there's a tiny thing of, like, you know, he's bowing to him and then he goes to stab him, but it's not particularly satisfying to me. Um, it's not Clever as a ploy, but I mean, the scene itself, oh, that's, uh, damn, like, that's some emotional potency right there. Yeah, like, the kind of shit I'm looking for is, he's talking to him, that one's fake, another one comes to get him, but that one's also fake, and there's a third one, and he only gets to the third one by doing, like, an AoE slam with the Power Stone, and, he, and then, like, you know, Loki falls, the actual Loki falls over, and he's like, the fuck? And then you can get him. Like, that would be more satisfying to me that Loki wouldn't have known that that was something that was going to happen, you know? Instead of just, he tried to knife him quick and it didn't work out. That's it. And in the same way, yeah, I, I probably would have preferred him getting taken down by Valkyrie in a more satisfying way. But, for example, I like the, um, Thor getting the device on him by patting his back. Uh, yeah. I think that Loki he's is... Tricking. He's tricking the trickster. Yeah, and, and he's just, he's learnt from... All the times they've interacted, and, and then that conversation is also, uh, it's kind of what Loki's been looking to hear from Thor for a while, in a way. So, I don't think he would have expected, because that's the thing, he thinks of Thor as, like, a dumb brute. Like, I find that satisfying, but I'm trying to think of any other examples. I mean, Thor does pretty, uh, Loki does pretty well in the third act. Yeah, I own, think so. Holds his own sort of thing. Um... You. Rags, domestic chat abuser and ruiner of grandma. No. He says no. No, no, yeah, no. Uh, Mjolnir refuses to be moved by unworthy people. True. See how that goes in the Seems new movie. Seems to be. Well, talk... we just need to know what she was doing in her past that would get her to that position, I think. Bring you talking about the flood. They're not a race, they're a parasite. Can't you also say that about you know what? Never mind. Also, hi John. Um John, yeah. I mean the yeah. flood the flood are a parasite. I uh, did I call them a race? I mean they are, sort of. Well yeah, it's it complicated by... because yeah, they're like, a species they have a con of spore thing. Well, it's kind of the problem with like the term race. Because, like, there's a difference between a race and a species, like, in reality. Yeah. The only reason we well, use race in the context we do is because we only have the one species of us that exists. Uh, well, it's just we're all human beings, regardless of our race. Yeah. Whereas, like, in Middle Earth, an elf is not a human. Like, they would be a yeah, different, different species races, from, yeah. a, from a... Well, they would be a different species, but, like, in the context of a fantasy setting, it makes Well, they even sense. say the race of men. Yeah, I guess I guess it's just that um generally when you talk about uh, well then you say alien races like in Mass Effect so you'd have like the Asari and the the Turians would be considered Yeah, it's races. almost like you would 
It's almost like a setup for dialogue between an alien and a human. It's like you call different colored humans different races, but they're still human. And they'd be like, yeah, it's just like a colloquial thing that we developed before we met other species. Well, yeah, I mean, I could easily imagine. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. Okay. Are they actually I... different species? Can you breed with them? It's like, do you share a planet with them? It's like, no, 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 they're all human. We're just different flavors. And we, yeah, it's just, yeah. I would be, I would be surprised if other species out in the, you know, the universe didn't have similar, like, words I, they, for... I mean, they probably, it's one of my pet peeves with a lot of science fiction stories is, um, like, for instance, and think about it with Halo, Sanghealy is the planet, uh, Sanghelios is the planet the Sanghealy come from. It's like, hmm, you know, like, it's like if you name the planet humanity, like, Earth is humanity. We've had this conversation <laughs> like, several Helios. times. Helios is... Oh, we did, and, we did. Yeah, I remember we, we did have this conversation. There is, there is a lot more to it, I think, than it being that simple. Because there's, there's plenty of, of context convention. in which that can happen perfectly reasonably, especially yeah, yeah. if the naming right, well, convention is controlled by other people. I guess to push it for forward a bit, a further pet peeve of mine is like, oh, what it? Because what is the language of the Sangheli, the Elites? It's Sangheli. It's like, well, there'd be more than one, right? Like, if I'm to believe that different planets will, if they if there are sentient beings that evolve into different cultures, they would. You know, I would imagine that an alien race would have as many languages uh, and as many cultural subdivisions within their own um, species as humanity does. Yeah, aliens like, and uh, works of fiction are often monocultural. They're often a monoculture, yeah. Which works for simplicity's sake, but... But, you know, if you want like, to yeah. go a bit further and do a bit more uh, world building try to implement some more language. Well, you don't need to come up with languages, just maybe create more cultural subdivisions within an uh, alien race. Also, do you both say species instead of species? Did I say species? Oh, I wait. don't know. Well, now no, that I, you've... I've now that it's question. at the forefront of my mind... Um, I think I uh, oscillate between the two. I've always said species. I think I say species. I I I probably I probably alternate a little bit, but I think I generally use species. I think I say species. I'm not sure. Now that I'm thinking about it, you've, you've <laughs> polluted you've polluted my yeah. mind with the focus. Uh, but I, I don't know I don't know which one I typically use. I think it's species. But species probably happens yeah, I probably alternate. Fair enough. Uh, do y'all have a teespring? I made a Game Stonks meme shit on there if you're interested. Rocky Mountain shirts? You know what? Uh, Game Stonks. How's that doing oh, these that, days? That... Game Stonks? Uh, what is Game Stop doing these days? Oh, they're, they're still worth a hell of a lot more than they... <laughs> so, for reference, prior to like the shorting stuff, they were averaging like three or four dollars for, for like a year. And then it shot all the way up to like 325 uh, a share. They're still at 100. Hmm. So if you bought before the rally, you're still up like probably 5x, if not more. <laughs> but uh, it's never hit the peak that it did. I before. sold all my GameStop currency to buy crypto. Yeah, and that's, uh, well, I guess. Hey, maybe there'll be another big out. bump down the line somewhere. That's right. You never know. Bye, bye, bye. If you don't play, uh, you don't win. Uh, mm. Just EFAP does not offer financial advice on. I, ha I offer plenty of advice. I, I, no, I, there are no, there's none of that financial advice here on, on the, on the EFAP show. Nope. Buy low, sell high. Um, diversify your portfolio, um, make money. Communism by the numbers was way worse, and communism keeps more people in abject poverty. Why did that come up? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> ah, it's always good to remind yourself, I guess. Civil civilians question Battle of New Orleans? New Orleans, sorry. Was that part of, like, the Mexican-American War? War of 1812. Oh, was that Battle of New Orleans was the War of 18... Did Andrew they... Jackson was the general there. Uh, yeah, because I, I just looked it up. I never... did. I didn't know... Because I, all I know about the War of 1812 is that the White House got burnt down. Um, and that it ended in a stalemate. I, yeah, that it ended in an inconclusive military draw. Hmm. Uh, 
Uh, fascism happens once communism fails. Ask China. Okay. What you're talking about? China number one. In response to the vampires under communism slash capitalism, I think they would thrive under liber libertinism. Libertinism? I don't know if they're supposed to be a different thing or if they're going for libertarianism. I think the thing about vampires is that they're typically very shrewd and politically aware and very savvy business-wise. They have almost like a mobster kind of vibe that they put out. So they could probably thrive in any economic situation. Yeah. Vampires with, yeah, whether it was, if it was under capitalism, they'd have all these businesses and corporations yeah. and underground things. If it was under like socialism or communism, they'd get into that upper class of people that, you know, pull all the strings. If it was libertarianism, I don't even fucking know. They'd just do whatever. They'd be in their castles, their spooky castles on mountains. And that would just be okay. <laughs> I don't even know. But I think that you could put them in a variety of different situations and uh, they'd be fine. Which is one of the things that I think is very appealing about vampires. This They're very charismatic and socially aware. And a, a vampire in one part of the world would be completely different than a vampire in another part of the world. But they're very versatile and very social. Like, imagine how you might have back in the day, right? Renaissance era... One of the popes is a vampire, right? He's controlling all of this stuff, political and religious and da-da-da. And he has all this influence in, uh, in, in this society and, he, and he's vampiric and he doesn't, he can't go outside or whatever. So maybe he plays it off as like a, some sort of a, a mark of God or something. Or he, he makes sure that he always is doing, having midnight masses, shall we say. All kinds of stuff. You could you could change all of these characters to vampires, and they they are they how they make it work could be really interesting. You could make a vampire story in basically any era that exists of civilization, and it would it would work, be it ancient times to science fiction. Are there any things that you think wouldn't work? When, like where you couldn't put a vampire? No, I'm also curious because you said like you could put a vampire anywhere and it could work. It's like it's well, what couldn't you put anywhere and it would, like, fall apart? Isn't that just a matter of the writer? I suppose. I guess in the sense of it's way easier to make it work and be plausible instead of saying, like, oh, actually, the Pope is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. You know, like, oh, you'd have to work really hard to make that be, like, a thing, you know? Whereas, like, oh, he's a vampire. He looks like us and he talks like us and he's charismatic and, you know, things of that nature. But, yeah. I suppose there's a lot of things you can make work in a lot of ways, but in terms of it being more easy to do, plausible, 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 and um, I guess narratively interesting uh, for a lot of people, uh, vampires are very versatile in that regard. I'm a big fan of vampires. Um... There you are, playing your favorite fantasy slash crime game when suddenly, boom... You're an orc. Slash black. Okay, that's to be fair. That came out of extra credits, alright? You didn't ask for this. You didn't want this. You didn't choose this as their, uh... Their line. Um... Oh god, there you are, playing your D&D, but all of a sudden you're an orc. You didn't ask for this. You didn't choose this, yet there it is. And it's treated no differently than playing a black man. Hey, man, that was their point they wanted to make. They made that it like an old point. lady That's with true. some some coffee or yeah. something. Old black lady with coffee was an ogre with grog. It was like, Jesus Christ. $10 to hear the EFAP crew do the... Oh, no, that one, that, that, that one we already read out. Uh, uh, clearly. We truly live in a society. Truly. We live in a society. Indeed we do. Fast forward to Assassin's Creed 29, where you meet an ex-CIA assassin. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. Also, hi, Rax. Hi. Uh, I mean, yeah, I could see the Assassin's Creed going to 29 installments. Why not? I mean, it's, uh, I think they're doing the live services up next. Oh. Well, yeah, we'll yeah see. look, all right. 
Everybody's doing live service. Sony's doing live service. All right, they want to make 10 of them by like 2026. 20, Everybody's doing live service. Too much money. Imagine an Assassin's Creed set in Russia or Japan trying to resist the Templars' communism or imperialism. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody's wanted a Assassin's Creed set in like Russia during like the Tsar, like the 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 um the October uh Oct fuck me, I can't believe October Revolution. Um, I think that was something that everybody wanted, and I I remember it was that uh, feudal Japan that was another one that everybody really wanted. Um. And they just never did it. <laughs> they never did those. I think uh, there was also China as well, like in ancient Chinese history or um, yeah, during one of the uh, later dynasties. When, uh, yeah, like the Han Dynasty and things like that. The unification yeah. of China kind of as we know it. Things of well, that yeah, nature. We have all these city-states that are warring and whatnot. It's just that um, there was a time there where the settings were starting to... Because they kept going forward. Because But the problem is once you jump to the American Revolution... To continue going forward means that like your options start to diminish a lot to where it became the the french revolution and then it was victorian england it's like we're getting real close to modern day now um and then they yeah we kind of almost gone one of the things well, that was really neat about it was it was more like classical to medieval and I mean, yeah, because it gets a bit harder to account for assassins in an era with guns. Like, it just starts to get a bit harder. But it just turns into, like, Hitman and Splinter Cell, which we have a lot of those games. We have and those I think, already, yeah. Yeah, and so there is that element of you just, you don't, you're not what you used to be. Like, you're just a modern stealth game. And as neat as Splinter Cell and Hitman are, that's not Assassin's Creed, well, you so know? I, just... I, I, I like those games for sure. It's just, yeah, it is a matter yeah. of Assassin's Creed has a bit of a niche. Unfortunately, for as much as I liked exploring ancient, uh, like, uh, going through Greece in Odyssey, it's like, man, I thought that, like, the first one was meant to be kind of the, the Crusades and that everything that was going to happen would be either around that time or later. And that doesn't preclude you from... There's a lot of history in that time. Um, yeah, absolutely. And there was more than one really, crusade. There was more than one crusade. It would, imagine if they actually did that. Like, wow, the reality is with this this live service game, we're probably going back to the crusades, but now I'm not excited to go back. It's going to be lame. I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to like this new live service Assassin's Creed, whatever it ends up being. Because it will probably be each new season, you get a new historical setting, but not particularly in depth. That's yeah, I was like, oh, I want you to do one thing really well. Exactly. That's one of the things that I absolutely adored about Assassin's Creed Origins was just that the setting was so awesome. And I would just go and look at everything there was because that the, the ancient Egyptian Greek mix, it was a gorgeous looking game with so many excellent details. And I really, really did adore just the environment and the setting. You just run around and look at stuff and run through cities and clamber around tombs and ruins and everything. It was it was so fun to just explore in that game. Yeah. I used extra credits for a school project on gamification once. Oh, how I cringe at the thought. They they have done good stuff. Yeah, they've they been, have legitimately they've been right done and good insightful things. on things. They used to, they used to be respected, I think. Well, they, yeah, think, they used um, to be respected, absolutely. And I think their history stuff is still fairly popular, though I never got into it or cared I think, about it. Yeah, uh, their history stuff, as well as their just advice on like game, like trying to make a game and everything, that's where they seem to be more liked. Hello, Massives. Muller, I was wondering if you've played Prey. Would love to see you break it down one day in Longman form. I've had it recommended a whole bunch of times, and I do intend to play it at some point. Yeah, I, I recommend it. Mm -hmm. That's a cool that's a cool game with a cool environment to explore. Fun stuff. Rongo, thoughts on Irish independence? Yeah, for me, I've, I w I've been meaning to ask you, but I feel now is that appropriate time I with the super I, chat. I, I How do you feel about that? I've been independent for less... I, can't, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm surprised you, you even against? said that. Yeah, I was going to say, usually. Well, the only thing I know about that is something that's... This is kind of a fun fact. Um, the Australian Constitution was... That was uh, written in... 19, well, it was probably written before because it was ratified like on the 1st of January 1901. And um, 
you know, we, we, we were and still are like part of the Commonwealth and, you know, like part of uh, Britain in a sense, or we definitely were back then, but now it's, yeah. In any case, it has under it, uh, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, because that was when it was written. And it's never been updated because in order to update the constitution, you need to go through a pretty extensive process. Uh, yeah, so like our sense. constitution refers to a country or like a union that doesn't really exist anymore. Which is kind of interesting. That's fine. That's just good lore. It's interesting lore that it would be, I guess what I find funny is that just through the sheer way that our legal system works and how difficult it is like in referendums and everything to change the constitution, it just never got changed. It would be too much work for something that most people don't even know. It's just funny. <laughs> it's one of those, I guess, it's one of just those harmless holdovers from an older time that's like, it's just character. Well, it, it has no impact on the, there's nothing about it that is legislatively relevant. It, it's just there as like a relic from that time. Just kind of interesting. Um, do the top 10 apes slash monkeys of all time you hacks. The top ten, man, ten. <laughs> ape slash. Oh, are we talking about like ape-like characters in movies and video games, or are I we thought, talking oh, about I species? species. Like, well, wings, I was going to ask. Do you mean in terms of strength? Is that how it's done, or or is it top or just ten in general terms of just favorite? Really, just cool ones. <laughs> it's like... I mean, I mean, maybe it's a boring choice, but like chimpanzees are awesome. They're yeah, really I mean, cool. I really like. Um... Chimps are cool. Gorillas are really neat. I like monkeys. They're fun. They're, monkeys they're fun are cool, yeah. But I couldn't I know. tell you any subspecies of like, like of all the monkeys. I don't know really. I mean, I mean, there's. Uh, we have, of course, my probably my personal favorite is a particular species of great ape. Um, what would that one be? Uh, humans. Oh yeah, of course we're great apes. I like orangutans a lot as well. They're, they're, uh... Yeah! They're I like Tang. Do you ever have Tang? Well, they're not orangutans, they're orangutans. Orangutans. Do you, do you ever have Tang, though? Tang? Yeah, you ever have a Tang? tang. It's like a... It's like, it was like well, an I'd... orange drink, yeah, and was, their mascot that... was the orangutan. I... Okay. I, we don't have Tang here. Um, Everyone says a... orangutans, even me. So I'm wondering where that came from. I think it, I think it just orangutans is like a little bit trickier because it's um, almost like poetic orangutan. You know, it's like I an onomatopoeia. I think so. Um, like an yeah. like an engine, you you wow. pull the lever and it goes orangutan. Out of curiosity, what is yeah. the and we'll do this just try and do it both at the same time ish, I guess. What letter does the the good book in the multiverse of madness? What letter does that word begin with? The, the book A? of the shanty. And Fringy? V. Yeah, it's V. It's not A. It's for shanty. But the, the thing is, of... oh, many okay. people believe it's a shanty because of how fast people say book of a shanty. Do you understand? Oh, okay. Book of a shanty. Okay. I see. We're book sorry. of a shanty, book of it. Yeah, it sounds basically identical. Yeah, you yeah. can't tell. Book of a shanty, book of I saw, because yeah. I was always saying book of a shanty, as in V, but some people were like, Mola keeps saying a shanty, and I was like, no, book of no, a shanty, <laughs> book of the shanty is, I just don't Yeah, even if you're out. specifically trying to say one, people <laughs> think it's the other, because uh, they sound yeah. identical. <laughs> I've now, out of curiosity, read into the etymology of orangutan. It's derived from the Malay words orang, meaning person, and hutan, meaning forest. So oh, the local forest person used the name to refer to act. Oh, this is funny. So uh, apparently, the word was originally used to refer to forest-dwelling humans, um, but the word underwent a semantic ex uh, extension to include apes of the Pongo genus, which is orangutan, in the early stage in the history of Malay. Man, that's 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 interesting. That makes sense because there is a lot of even in the very early stages of um, like phylogeny studies and like evolution discussion, things of that nature, and going back further. But people, pretty much people all over the world, recognize that humans and a lot of the monkeys and apes, we are not hugely dissimilar in a wow. lot of very obvious ways. I think, um, I mean, when you talk about how close chimpanzees are as an ancestor, it's like, 
obviously we're not the same, but like you can see, you can see. We are the clearly similarity. very, yeah. We we are we are alike in a lot of ways. Like the, the, I mean, it's it's uh, it's, I'm not even sure why like people have such a hang up about like that. I I don't see the problem. Like chimpanzees are super impressive animals. Like their problem solving capabilities, their use of tools, their organized social structures. I think it's a like, mostly religious thing. Uh, that was the biggest, uh, as far as I know, that was the biggest kind of uh, roadblock on a lot of the evolutionary discussions surrounding what do we classify humans as and what do we classify the apes as. Right, whereas, uh, like, because we really are, care, you know, like, yeah, because we're so clearly super similar. Um, and, and there's that aspect of, you know, no, we're made in God's image, or we're, humans are particularly special in this sort I of mean, intrinsic, in deep sense, spiritual way, so it cheapens right. our existence by saying that we are also, like, ape creatures. Because what I was going to say is humans are special in the sense that we've created this massively complex world. But oh, I mean, yeah, we're I, special, I, definitely. I, I, I don't really, I don't, it doesn't bother me, really. <laughs> like, yeah, and, yeah, uh, it's it's that attitude of, and, and similarly, there's also the, the religious aspect of, we can be similar. In fact, we're going to use that as an argument for how there is an intelligent designer behind everything because so many things have so much similarity. We're going to say that that is evidence for the fact that it all me, comes from a singular The fact, you know, the fact that so many animals have two eyes and four limbs and everything, and we do all that stuff. I guess um, some of the, uh, now I'm just thinking about something else. Isn't it interesting to think that for a good portion of like human history, we inhabited the world with other intelligent like human ape species yeah or like, like neanderthals, neanderthals yeah. and yeah neanderthals and then all of the other ones that you forget about i mean i think uh because homo erectus died out before we existed was, right i th i think so i'm not sure i'd have to check I because think, we uh, have homo erectus neanderthals homo habilis and australopithecus afarensis which is i, I think what lucy was yeah, he was a cool dude. Um, really, okay. yeah. Um, interesting. They, they like, did. The last known population of Homo erectus uh, was a subspecies that lived in Java around 117 to 108,000 years ago, at which point we definitely existed. Because um, I think anatomically modern humans is at most 200,000 years ago, but definitely 100,000 years ago. And then I, I think, think depending on, yeah, depending on where you want to draw the line, which a lot of the evolutionary lines are basically arbitrary. Yeah. Um, yeah. Modern humans are like a hundred thousand at the hundred thousand to twenty seventy five. Yeah. So it, it depends where you draw the line. Yeah. And I think um, that uh, that I remember this was in a Curse Kazakhs video, but then I read it or listened to it in an audio book that. Um, the, 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 the complex capabilities of the mind, the human mind, would have developed later, around 50,000 years ago. Like, that's as far back as you could go to have a behaviorally modern human, which is interesting to think about. Yeah, History. you do wonder how far back you could go, like, if you were a time traveler, and yeah, you're just like, I fuck civilization, I'm returning to monkey. How far well, back can I go to find a group of proto humans that i could actually get along with so the book presented a similar thing which was how far back could you go to just get a baby from that time raise them in the modern mm -hmm. world and nobody would notice um ah, and i think they said okay. about fifty thousand years ago is about how far back you could go because before that for whatever reason the brain just wasn't at the state that it could really do complex things like modern language um like something happened around 50 60 thousand years ago that just we got a lot smarter really quickly um i think i think they uh, believe that uh proto humans like earlier humans actually had bigger brains than we did and were like on the whole more capable of being um of of higher intelligence because of the lifestyle that they lived demanded so much of them interesting stuff it is interesting stuff now you made me think about how I watched that thing, both of you separately, and the fun fact about humanity's, um, let's say, happiness and pro like individual uh, efficiency and, and and like abilities is. I, I I'm trying to find better words, but the the shortcut would just be once agriculture was introduced, um, yeah, and it, it did significant damage, and um, I just remember the complete opposite reactions for both of you. Rags was like, I don't think so, and Free was like, Yep. Oh, I 
I watched all the Kurzgesagt Gazak videos, so I know the truth, which is that <laughs> agri agriculture really made our lives really tough for a long time. I think, um, yeah, it was in the book Sapiens, because I'm pretty sure that's where Kurzgesagt did some of their research from, that, um, that the average person probably led a much harder, more difficult and painful life for much of the agricultural period than uh, the hunter-gatherers did. The problem was that once you become, there were a lot of utilities to hunter-gatherers to engage in limited agriculture. Uh, and then that limited agriculture eventually turned into more permanent agriculture. Problem is, if you're born and raised in an agricultural society, it's kind of hard to like imagine not being that or even being capable of going back to hunter-gatherer lifestyles. So for a long time, it was really tough because th there's actually a level of food insecurity. If your crop is bad, you're dead. Um, you have to worry about people coming and stealing your food. Uh, living next to animals meant that a lot of diseases that were never exposed to humans, a lot of, a lot of the illnesses now, like the, the cold and everything, stem from living with animals. It was, it was tough for a long time. But the utility of agriculture now is like, we, we created this world where uh, people's lives are broadly easier. Interesting stuff. Yeah, it's like, it lays the foundations for what we eventually had, but at first it was it was a rocky ride. Mm -hmm. um, just a reminder that PewDiePie has been making videos for 10 years, yet no one... Ha Yet has not once reviewed Pi. Also, hi Rags. Pi. Well, I don't. I don't even know if he's a mathematician. He might not be, like, um, like might not be his level of or his area of expertise. I feel like I could review Pi without being a mathematician. I suppose maybe it's a, a, a maybe it's a, a, like a matter of interest, and it would require a lot of research into you know, maybe the history of it and. Uh, you know, maybe contention like who found with it the that pie might exist. and what kind of pie you end up with in different countries if any difference at all or if there's incredible similarities this is all part of the same system of pie funny to see link we have there would be many pie charts many many of those lots oh, yeah, of those yeah. When did you see Linkara be bitter about Chris O'Neill? Yeah, we this came up in a different catch-up we did. Linkara doesn't like to be made fun of. If he embraced it, it'd probably be much better for him. Yeah, you really kind of should sometimes. It's, you know, have enjoy the memes, embrace them. They give you a lot of character. Instead of thinking you have to be the OC of your own anime, and you're just amazing and perfect and incredible. I say he literally made himself the OC of his own... Well, manga, I guess. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it was a cartoon little comic. I'm not sure exactly what genre. Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong is basically WWE the movie. Fair enough. <laughs> I don't know anything about WWE, so I couldn't tell you if that was accurate or not. I want to I wanna give WWE more credit. Well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's impressive about WWE. The fact that it is fake and, like, all of the coordination and the athletics of that. And there's probably, like, a story that legitimately is, like... <laughs> like characters knowing each other and being on, like, uh, like arcs with model, each yeah. other. That, that's oh, what absolutely. I was about to say. It absolutely. probably has better writing than Marvel. <laughs> Shit. Oh. Man. Ephaps Kong, poet, philosopher, intellectual, monkey. I mean, yeah, why not? Hey, look, I like Monkey. You're right. Godzilla is kind of an a-hole, similar to Superman. It, well, Zack Snyder is Superman, presumably. Um, but I, I, I don't even, like I said, I don't know the narrative of Godzilla vs. Kong, so... Um, I'm now picturing Kong gently pulling the roof off an art museum, sitting down beside it and quietly pondering the paintings as people run away. Yeah, he'd be like, how come I don't get any access? This seems like discrimination. Need be right. Uh, Mola, will we, we be getting a Falcon and Winter Soldier stream like we got for WandaVision? Also, hi, Rags. Hi. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> you did indeed. Yeah. I think that went down as one of our more popular breakdowns. Like, people... 
either really hated that show or really enjoyed us talking about how much we hated that show. Or both. Well, I didn't enjoy hating it. I just hated that show. Mm -hmm. it made me very angry. It perturbed me. Yo, A great deal. When are you and the other weebs gonna get... Gonna... gonna going to do... Sorry, it's a bit weirdly written. Uh, anime EFAP. We need to do... So... So... We can destroy vanilla EFAP. Vanilla EFAP? It's not just regular EFAP. Vanilla EFAP. Look, you got Arcane, alright? Isn't that good enough? You yeah, really need us to, to talk about an anime? Ugh. Discuss amongst yourselves if Arcane is anime. Uh -huh. And then just never get back to us <laughs> on what you discover. If you bring up, like, what constitutes an anime, the fucking chat go nuts with each other. Because they're all, like, they all treat it as though it's definitive. Like, like the answer. But it, there's, it, a, there's an anime bible that has all the, the rules for what is and is not an anime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they all have funny. different bibles, so it's like, uh-oh. Oh, what do you know? The, the, the analogy gets realer and realer. It's like, <laughs> who, what company explored. produced it and where that company is? Or where was it created? Where was it drawn? Or who the original creator and owner, where they're from? It's like, man, all these, these different ways to figure it out, huh? Uh, I've read Attack on Titan End, and I knew it was going to be bad, but I didn't realize it was going to be Game of Thrones bad. Oh, do you guys remember when that happened? Like, Attack on Titan I got a really bad think... ending, and we were just like, oh no. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't really didn't like it, it, did they? Yeah, I got, I got nothing for you, though, because I just don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. Big creatures know. attacking a city or something. That's all I know. Writing is the bread. All else is the butter. Okay. One way to put it. <laughs> sure. All else is the butter. I suppose because, yeah, you wouldn't want to have... If someone's like, would you like the sandwich? And it's it's the sandwich, but no bread. It'd just be like stuff in your hands, and you're like, okay. Feels a bit weird. But if yeah. you just had bread, just, you know, that, that's, that's food. Yeah, like I, can, I can eat this, yeah. you know? It'd just keep me alive. Dry, though. But if I just had a hand... Just butter. A <laughs> hand of butter. <laughs> Uh, he fucked up on human clock with recovery, the black suit. Uh, he's talking about Snyder, he fucked up on everything to do with clock. Yep. Aquaman better than yep. Black Panther, both still suck. Hmm, I don't know Probably about Probably not. That. Aquaman's terrible. Yeah. Like, Black Panther has qualities in it that are worthwhile. I don't really know what I would praise in, um... Aquaman, like Aquaman is an absolute mess. Clusterfuck. A hilarious clusterfuck. And I, honestly, one of yeah. the biggest reasons I want to see the sequel now is to see what Amber Heard's role in it is. Well, kind of, the I mean, meta has really well, seeped into it. I don't know how much you know, Rags, but in her testimony, Not much. while she was, uh, yeah, in her testimony for the case, she uh, she said that her role has been pared down. That, uh, yeah, she's, she's even asked. Cut. She was asked about all of her different things to prove whether or not damage has been done to her, and at one point she says that uh, she doesn't even know how much is going to make it to the final cut now. So, yeah. there's a strong awareness. That Everyone she, knows what's uh, going on. Like, <laughs> Well, I mean, I think... I mean, I, I feel like it's got a show in that based on everything that's come out about that film, it seems like the focus is on Aquaman and his brother, not those two as a pairing, you know? Mm -hmm. So it almost feels like there was an awareness from the outset of like, hmm... Well, Which sure, makes but look you at, like, wonder why you wouldn't end the contract, you know? Probably had something similar to Christine in uh, Doctor Strange, and they've you can yeah. you could probably knock out a lot of Christine stuff in Doctor Strange if you really wanted to. Yeah, pro well, honestly, I, to the point I, again, where you have her to... ask, "Are you happy in the fucking wedding?" and then you don't have yeah. anything all the way up until uh, like the end of him talking to Wong about being happy. You could cut all of her out. Uh, I think it'd be tough, right, when they're walking together through the crazy. I guess if you. Then shouldn't again, be she walking. Well, it's just... Would, she wouldn't... I guess you could chop it around and kind of put him on his own through reshoots. There's always reshoots. Oh, yeah. You would definitely end up with something really choppy and awkward, uh, but I think you can but, do it. And that's the movie. Because well, you know, you like, know, like when he's attacked by the spirits, you just don't have her say anything, and he just opens his eyes, and he's like, I yeah. can control... <laughs> Which, to be fair, would make more sense. <laughs> it's, it I have to be the one holding the knife. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, the fact that she even questions the Darkhold is just like, yeah, this is the reason why I hold the knife, bitch. 
I'm willing to save the multiverse, even if it means using this spooky book. Oh, don't remind me of how much I really don't like what they did to- I don't even like Christine. Man, is well, she worthless in that film. Onto before, but now, yeah. Uh, where is the last Super Chat catch-up from March? Um... <laughs> <laughs> At this stage, no idea how if, to help you. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to. I can't help you with that. Uh, they all get put out. I haven't missed one, so it's in. It's on Moolah somewhere. I do try to list them by date or at least in the title what they're covering, but obviously, uh, they uh, they could all be mixed together at this point. They are. They are a huge selection of videos where the three of us just talk about stuff and reply to people. It's an insight into the minds of the the mad, mad, mad men yes. who are behind all this. Um. So, Falcon the Winter Soldier has anime slash Atla Tia dialogue. Um. I don't remember. Was it? They probably a lot of this bad shit has really bad dialogue. Um. When you say Lines. Atla level an anime level, I assume you mean everyone was saying how they felt. Which, by the way, I will take that over assassination. I'll take, I'll oh, take yeah. that bad writing. Like, really bad writing. Well, as far as I'm yeah, concerned, it I'll is bad writing. That's why I'm saying I'd prefer it yeah, to yeah. assassination. I, yeah, a well, character being blunt about acting. how they really are is way better than At than least just they're still acting in accordance with their beliefs constantly. to some extent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're not well, destroying themselves in the process. Everything Doctor Strange says to Christine before, like, uh, once they've defeated Wanda, that, that to me feels like anime writing, where it's just like, it's time for you to end your, uh, or to complete your arc with her, so you got to say all the things. It's like, what things are you going to say? It's like, uh, yeah, I've always loved you, but I'm scared you'll get hurt if I was to hang out with you. That's it. I'm like, all right, here we go. Like, the, the, it's, it's, uh, it's really easily done, but I mean, there's also bad dialogue throughout these things, as well as on-the-nose dialogue. Uh... I hate how John McAfee, billionaire type, is treated like he has no legitimate point, and Sarizawa is just there in Godzilla vs. Kong. Who's Sarizawa? Not familiar with the movie, so I couldn't tell you. Neither am I. Also, eco terrorist Jonah Weir. Oh, uh, that's Charles Dance's character, right? I think. I think you, yeah, but I. He's oh, not God, in I it. I can't remember shit. Maybe. So uh, the, part of the reason why I wasn't as encouraged to go see it was that he, they didn't bring back Charles' dad. So I was like, why? Dad. Yeah. Put him in Godzilla vs. Kong. Maybe he didn't feel like it. It's like, hey, you want to come back? Nah. He was barely <laughs> in King of the Monsters. It was he ridiculous. Was in it. it was like probably spent a week filming. If that, yeah. Well, didn't yeah? We had a quote from him where he said like he enjoyed the appetizers or whatever. That's all he had to say about filming the fucking movie. Holy crap, that's so bad. <laughs> because he wasn't really in it, like... It's such a shame, like, why is it that you find out, oh, people like this guy and his portrayal of this leading, charismatic, and at times arrogant, but very assertive, leader-type guy. It's like, people like him, alright, bring him in. Don't give him any lines, though. It's like, well, that, that, oh, but that's what people... Liked. It wasn't just yeah. him standing there. But, okay. Don't. He's like, don't you want to hear that? And they're like, mm, no. I don't know what movies even are. Yeah. What is acting? I don't know. Just make the product. Uh, missed the main video discussion, but I can say as a dungeon master for D and D, the rules on evil races have always been more suggestion as opposed to strict requirements. Extra credits clearly hasn't played in many games. Well, it's, it's you. You get to decide what they are. You're the GM. It's your world. You make all the rules. You're the god of that universe. That's the whole point. If you say it's that way, then it's that way. That's kind of your job, is to do that in a in a meaningful, sensible way. I'm not defending them, but it sounded like in their video they didn't care what rules are in what place. They're just saying outright it's wrong to, to make a race evil at the base or whatever. Um, Abe Lincoln Vampire Hunter is a ripoff of Mauler's Life. Oh. Oh, wow. I never knew. Yeah, I didn't know either. Cool. You never told, you never told us. That you had a, a biography, mm -hmm. a, bi a biopic, whatever it is. Grug have a dream that one day small orc and small human are judged by not violence of war clan, but by if they good or no. Grug have a dream today. Also, Grug almost forgot High Rag. Hi, <laughs> hi, <I> rag. <laughs> I like that. Drugs friendly. 
<laughs> whether they make it good or no. Hey, Rags, Mola, and Fringy. Hey. No. Hi. What do you think of Peter Griffin's character development over the course of the show? Do you think he's a Giga Chad? I like just he, not uh, familiar enough. He's another character who like deteriorated over time. Yeah, uh, I don't think he was particularly great as a character in the same way that I think Homer is at, at his best. No, no, no way. Um, but he definitely fell apart over time. I don't have much yep. to say on Peter I... Griffin. Uh... Well, yeah, because he was kind of just like a not as good version of Homer, but then unlike Homer, who kind of just became like really stupid, Peter became a psychopath. <laughs> Yeah, he's like really cruel. Yeah. Um, he has absolutely well, yeah. It, whereas Homer, Homer isn't, um, I guess, like broadly, he like he just hates Meg. He doesn't. I don't know. You know, it's like lots of things aside. Yeah, because I remember seeing videos make that point. They show like clips from other stuff, and it's like, oh yeah. And a lot of it is obviously for jokes, but like when you stack it up, well, like hmm. it, it all it's all part of character at the end of the day. What about the beginning of the day. Uh, well, at the beginning, uh, that's what I'm break. saying, at the beginning the and the end. <laughs> There's a break in the day, yeah. There's a break, you wake up, you don't have to be anyone, not even yourself, you could just get it, you oh. know, do, get it all out of your system, and then, as the day goes on, you know, maybe around noon or so, you know, it's time to be you, and you're like, oh yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right, and then you, you shrug your shoulders, and you go, <clears throat> you get your voice all right, and then you go out into the world as yourself. But then when you get home, and you sleep, you know you could rise in the morning and you could finally drop this charade and I could be whoever I want to be, not even myself. My DM unironically shared this in our D&D Discord group and tried to talk about how this and the neo-Nazi video are correct. Or the Nazi video, sorry. Uh, uh, what should I do? Also, hi, Rag. Hi. Oh, man, they might be too far gone. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. I mean, if... It depends on what they agree with. What, what, what... And why do they think those are accurate perspectives? And why do they have so little... I don't know, it's almost like a low-key insult when someone believes that stuff is true because it implies how they think about how you are able to process information. Hopefully it doesn't fucking damage your games, and yeah, you're just gonna have to keep having the conversations with them. Hopefully they don't get too hostile. That's, that's all I got. I hope not. Like, tell him that you are an adult, and you can differentiate between fiction and reality. It's actually not that difficult, um, regardless of what extra credits might say. Um, and hopefully your games are still good. Play Eternal Darkness. It's on Dolphin. Uh, it's not really suitable for Super Chat Catch-Up. Eternal Darkness, I'm afraid. Is that the... That's the one with the mobster who gets the spooky powers? Uh... I think that's just right. darkness or something. It's a different game. Something darkness. Eternal Darkness is like a horror game that's uh, uh, like top down ish. Go around in like buildings and solve puzzles and stuff. Okay. All right. Uh, Fringy, have you ever considered that you're racist for treating everyone equally? It's... Um, I'd say that I haven't considered that because I don't know. I just because Mahler and I, I we were gonna, we were gonna mention it. I one don't of know, these just days, be we've been talking people the same way, uh, regardless of their immutable characteristics. Oh, there he is, doubling down. I told you he'd do this. I can cut this part out, don't worry about it. Yeah, I'd cut this part out. You'll thank us later, Fringy. It's best that people don't know. We'll fix you. We can, we, we can fix him. I can fix him. Also, is there an okay way to depict an Eskimo? Or is it always racist? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are on that one. I I don't know what the rules are today. Um, could be yes, could be no. I'm not sure, honestly. Nubia exists. Me. Comics had their chance. Nubia? What is that? Nubia? Who is Nubia? Or is where is... Is that a place or a person in the comics? I don't know. It said, like, you have, like, you have Nubians, right, from, like, the Nubia region, or is that a... Oh, well, there's a follow-up saying, for serious, check out Jay Longbone reading of Nubia. Uh, Jay Longbone Nubia. Let me click on that. Maybe it'll... Jay Longbone Nubia. Oh, I remember 
the I remember the imagery, but I don't know like anything about the character. Oh, is that like the I'm I'm a strong super like independent woman who's very 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 black and I'm Wonder Woman but better. Honestly, I don't know. I'm out of the loop on that one. I think that's what it was. It was something like that. It was like some Wonder Woman, like the the Wonder Woman, but the black one. Um, if I may self shill, I've written a short story titled "The Heads." You can read on Wattpad. Funnily enough, I named the main character Jeb before listening to EFAP. Now all I can see is people's president trying to reanimate human heads. Oh, well, he was never a president, but... Um... <laughs> yeah, well, they said the people's president, which is true. <laughs> oh, the people's president. Yes, of course. in our hearts, Jeb is... Gone, but not Jeb forgotten. is my well, king. Not gone. Not gone and not forgotten. Not gone, not Jeb forgotten. Is my... Highly influential. King. God king. God king God president. God king of, of my world. heart. Oh, my, yeah. God um, king of my heart. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. I'd be surprised if you've Jeb. never heard of Jeb, though, before. Jeb just. Fair enough that you chose to name your character Jeb. That's fine. I'm not judging. In fact, it's a great choice. Powerful name. Uh. You guys like Falcon the Winter Soldier? No. no. Not really. Bad. If you want more elaboration, there is a stream. Don't you worry about it. Um, I think all of Extra Credit's history series have a video at the end dedicated to everything they got wrong or left out. Now that's just good history. Um, sounds like that stuff is way better than their um, stuff people don't like that they do. Yeah. Seems yeah. that way. Um, Fringy, can you name three historical revolutions you consider morally justified? Thanks. We're not doing that. <laughs> uh, cold racist? Say you got a pass from Woodstock '99. All right. Woodstock '99. Yeah, I don't know what that is. The only Woodstocks I know are the uh, music festival and, and Snoopy's friend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are your gun choices in RE4? I sell the handgun, sell the Punisher, and use the Red 9, and use shotgun, skip riot gun for striker, use TMP, skip rifle for semi-auto rifle, and skip all the magnums. Generally, what I will do is, if I'm playing, like, I guess, super serial, and I'm not trying to just challenge myself, I will, um... I think I will keep the handgun until we get to the Red 9, I will get the Punisher, and I will get all the medallions so that it comes with the free power upgrade, and I'll sell it, because mm -hmm. uh, it sells for more once you get it anyway. Um, I will keep the shotgun. I only upgrade, if I upgrade shotguns, it's really just power. Uh, I don't upgrade capacity or reload or anything like that, because you just don't need it. Power Oof. is really the most important I'll upgrade I'll disagree on capacity. That's one of the best ones oh, to upgrade so? for uh, like magnums or high capacity things in general because it's just a free reload. Um, I never found. I've never found. Uh, I generally skip capacity upgrades unless it's for the TMP or Red Nine or something that I'll have for a while, because capacity is you can play around that. Well, you uh, get the not too difficult added benefit then as well of it has more space to put your ammo into the gun as opposed to your briefcase. Yeah, you can hold some more, but generally I don't have the issue where I've run out of space and really, really need a couple extra shots. Uh, the um, only time that really rest, super applies is going to be with a TMP, because TMP capacity gets so big. But you want to really time your TMP capacity upgrades for when your TMP is empty, so you get all the free bullets that come with the capacity upgrades. Uh, but yeah, generally, that's the no. same logic I use for basically all the weapons. I've I've never I I think ammo is so plentiful in that game once you get good that you you just never need it. It's just not a necessary you'd be close to being a necessary thing. I, I always skip it, uh, for the most part. Capacity is one of the last things that I well, I think reload speed is probably the last thing that I upgrade. Let's be fair, if you really go to the game, there's a lot of things you don't need to do. Uh yeah. Uh sure. Uh maybe that's why I don't do it. But I just never really it of course it's weapon dependent. Uh a but I, I generally don't go with the well, capacity like I save... upgrades. You know, like However, grenades and power weapons, dare I call them, for bosses. But someone could be like, you don't need to do that. You're really good at it. And I'd be like, yeah, I know, but I like uh, it. Depends on the boss. 
Uh, you definitely want to have, like, you want to have uh, four incendiaries for um, uh, Mendez. Uh, yeah, you want to have the some point is you don't have to. You don't have to, but it's generally going to be worth it. But I, I, I get, I have never found needing the, the, the extra space that capacity upgrades give you to just be worth the money that you could be saving up for power. Um, I just never uh, found the exchange to really be worth it for me. Capacity is such a low uh, price that I've never seen it eating into my power budget. And I've just never, never really gone for it. Uh, so, yeah. But I will generally go with, um, I keep the pistol until I get to red nine, buy red nine, uh, sell Punisher with the extra upgrade. I will keep the, I'll get the different shotguns as I go, but I'll only upgrade power pretty much. Um, I generally do not get the rifle. Sometimes I do, uh, but generally I don't get the rifle. Uh, I will almost always have the TMP. The TMP is insanely good. It's probably my favorite weapon in the whole game and other than that yeah when when i get the striker i sell the riot gun and get the striker though i will say the capacity upgrades are much more useful in resident evil 5 which is an interesting idea for a video that i've had which is that the change in the inventory system between 4 and 5 means that you have far more reason to upgrade your uh like things like capacity which will influence what kind of a weapon that you will even take um the starter pistol for instance in resident evil 5 i forget the names of them um it can hold eventually 100 rounds in it even though it doesn't have the power uh or some other things that the other handguns do the fact that it can hold 100 means that the nine inventory spaces that you have in Resident Evil 5, uh, you don't even have to spend one of them on having pistol ammunition at all because a hundred can go into the gun itself. So there, there's actually some interesting balance advantages that come with having that nine slot inventory, even though I don't like it in general. I've always liked the attach, uh, attache, attache case for Resident Evil 4. Um, well, everyone prefers the Resident Evil 4 case, and they still haven't gone back to it. They keep almost baiting that they'll get back to it. Even Resident Evil Village came a little closer than ever. Sort but of still, close, yeah. Still not there. I mean, aesthetically, it certainly looked worse. It just looks too boring and gamey. Whereas in Resident Evil 4, things were different colors, and you actually they they looked like the things just in well, a, in got, a box. Like it's not just about matching how it looks, or even necessarily how it works. The whole game has got to morph to be able to accommodate that system again. It's a lot more complicated than just being like, look, it's the briefcase. You're like, yeah. Remember, Resident Evil 7 had a similar setup as well, because they're forever chasing the high of Resident Evil 4. Instead, but they they forever just refuse to do Resident Evil 4. Exactly, it's like they can't- Because <laughs> they can't Resident Evil 4 is worked. just so, it's so specific. It's, Resident Evil 4 plays like no other Resident Evil game. Five is the closest that it comes to. And even, five, and in some ways, five improves on four. In some ways, it does. But it's almost like this recognition that everyone loved four. We're just not going to do it again. We're not even going to try. Because the gameplay of Resident Evil 7 and Village is just like the most bare bones, mediocre gameplay you could ever possibly have. It's just put a dot on an enemy's head and click seven times. It's insanely unfun and just very uninteresting and super mediocre and you have so little yeah. options in terms of actual combat when four clearly has all these things that you could do with doors and windows and your melee functions and kicking and timing and you know using your iframes that were very you know they exist but now they don't they just don't do any of that stuff it's this weird refusal to have the game be like a game that's fun to play, to replay constantly and get better and better and better at. Which is funny because I don't know why. a lot of the marketing for Village was like, hey, you liked four. Look, we got a merchant back. We got the, the briefcase. Village back. Just like the, the fact that it's called Village. And it's like, don't you remember the, the opening of four is like a, it's a village. Like, yeah. Also, we got but all the things you actually vampires. like. Seriously. Yeah. Village could have been a fucking amazing game. Oh, unfortunately. Talk, 
We talk no. all about all the cool things that they could have done. Village would have been a great way for them to really breathe a different kind of vibe into Resident Evil. And actually, dare you actually introduce curses? Like, this isn't like anything. We're actually doing it. We're legitimately, like, vampirism and lycanthropy. It's real. It's not some bioterrorist umbrella science bullshit. It's like actually, it's actually like a curse. We're going there with Resident Evil. Yep. But in the end, it was no. It's just it's just black mold bullshit. It's magic without Always calling it magic, mold. essentially. And it's just shit. And the game was bad, and it just was very dull and boring to play. And it breaks so easy. It is one of the most. You have to be super on script to play that game, or else it's not even good on the there rails. There's so much wrong with it. Yeah, used. we. Uh, I feel like we did a pretty good breakdown of it, honestly. We did a very good breakdown on it. Uh, I'll be around for the next one. Hopefully it's better. Did we, did we conclude it was better than 7? I can't remember anymore. I think so. I think it was a little bit better than 7. Okay. I'd rather play it than 7, uh, certainly. Yeah. Uh, I think it's more consistent throughout than 7 was. Because 7, yes. I feel like, you get to that like 4 hour mark, and then it's just like... Yeah, it's, it's like rushed. It really starts to... Yeah, it, it drops off Bug a lady steep, section, but... funhouse, weird booby trap section... That's like the is where it starts getting real thin, and then you go to the the mines the and the ship, and they're both incredibly thin. Just an yeah, area very... you run through and things attack you. Oh god, I that was a miserable playthrough. I remember doing that, but like when I because I think I did seven playthroughs in total for that game to get it all for the for the review, and I remember just being so fucking done with playing it. Yeah, I, I, I think with that section. When I got to the ship, it was maybe 30 minutes after that where I was like, oh, I'm just, you're just wasting time until we're done, yeah. aren't you? You're j I, I'm, re I'm really ready to be done, actually. And that fucking it choice between the two girls, what a joke. Because, yeah, that game just wasn't finished. Um, it got so many great reviews, though. It really, really did, yeah. It really did. It was people, a return well, so to village. their roots, right? Uh, I hate when people say did, that because it's I just not did, fucking true. I can't remember now. Was that a thing for Resident Evil 7? Return to their roots? Uh, yes, it definitely was. It was oh, that fuck, was yeah, no. Cause the, sorry, I was trying to remember if it was you 8 or 7. You had action in one of your videos or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. It it's just, no, it, it shows you... Not. It's always been this way. There's just this tagline that everyone says about a game because that's what they know to say. The same thing happened with ukulele, but like the reverse, where it was like everyone knows to say the camera doesn't work, the the pacing is all off, and it's just like none of these arguments are actually substantiated or even compared with the games that they'll praise in its place. Because, man, original thought? Hard to find on YouTube. Even if it's cringe. <laughs> like, it's fine. It's better than when you just go... What's everyone saying about this game? Cycles of violence? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, this game talks about the cycles of violence. It's very deep. Oh, they didn't like The Last of Us? Uh, yeah, it's a bad game. Boo. Mm -hmm. Like, those people are probably the worst kinds of people, right? <laughs> you don't hear from the, them yeah, that the, much, the though. Shifty, There's yeah, no reason they don't to hear have from a... them. Yeah. At least the people Whereas, who... Like, it's weird, because we played Village, and we were just all, like, on the same page, pretty much. Yeah, just, it, This just isn't good. This is, like, actually bad. Like, watching anybody's streams of it, be it Fringy, myself, Metal, and... I think Jay Longbone streamed a bit of it. I can't remember if Az did. I know Drinker did. It's just, you know, it only lasts so long. Like, the novelty of all of it. Especially for, I feel, like, more mechanically focused, dare I say, gamers, uh, who are, like... Trying to figure out how best to min-max everything and then eventually break the game by accident and you're just like, oh, fuck's sake. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm gonna actually treat this like a video game, not like some roller coaster ride where I'm just ready for the next spooky thing. Yeah. Uh, really, like, this is a video game, first and foremost. I will treat it as such, and it fails very much in that regard. Despite how much it tries to not be a video game in many ways. So by extra credit, thinking the goblins from Goblin Slayer aren't evil since there is, it's not their fault. They don't have females of their species. They have to kidnap an, uh, unwilling women to reproduce. Wait, what? <laughs> I don't know enough about Goblin Slayer. 
I, have, I don't know anything about Goblin Slayer. Hmm. Hi, Rags. I assume he slays goblins. Yes. Hi, Rags. Hi. As the funniest member of EFAP, I was wondering who are your favorite comedians? Most curious to hear your thoughts on George Carlin. Uh, I don't know that much about George Carlin. Uh, I, n I really like Norm MacDonald and Stephen Wright. I like, um... Ah, oh, gosh. Um, I enjoy... I'm trying to think of his name. Bill Burr? Yeah, Bill Burr's pretty funny. Pretty I like Bill face. Burr. Yeah, he's funny. Yes. Um, I really but like Colonial. Sean Locke and... Uh, who is the guy yeah, you'd mentioned? Like, yes, uh... uh you did the voice of him, and I was like, oh, that's a good voice. David Mitchell? Yeah, yeah, I like him. Uh, I like Stephen Carr. I like him. I think he's funny. Um, John Richardson can be pretty funny. I like... A lot of these are from just, like, British panel shows <laughs> who are just yeah. funny people. Joe Wilkinson. Um, Stephen Fry? Uh, Stephen Fry? Yeah, yeah, I, I found him pretty funny. Um, Dave Chappelle. Yes, Dave Chappelle is funny. So, yeah, there, there you go. It's just like an exhaustive list of all. <laughs> kind of, like, let me name a bunch off. of funny people. Uh, just ignore that black guy with a closet full of clan robes he got from converting KKK guys. Them hood wearers is evils. Uh, extra credits. Oh, yeah, because they said at one point that, um... Like, what was it? Something like... You could the have uniform that you wear is just like who you are, and, and that's yeah, like just it's, like it's, your it's evil over for if you, you wear basically. a uniform. And he, yeah. I think he said like cult worshippers, and then he also had like people wearing KKK hoods. He was like, you know they're evil. And it's like, wait. Was like, I don't <laughs> like, know if I want to get that overly simplistic, honestly, you know? Uh, I wonder how they would react to the original Iron Man. Stanley wanted to make a character that was, uh, that the public would hate by the end but by the end sympathized with. Tony was a rich arms dealer in the 60s during the counterculture movement. Um, well, I guess that's the idea, right? A lot of the time with premises for trying to create endearing stories, it's like challenging. Stanley seemed very concerned with um, character from the clips, interviews and stuff I've seen with him, and it doesn't surprise me at all that uh, Tony Stark can transcend Sort of age, the age he was written in, because there's always going to be someone selling stuff to people that make bad things happen, but then they can also just be a human. And so, how do you make them uh, an audience almost favorite? And it's like, yeah, Tony mm -hmm. Stark is an exploration of that, and it just further pushes the conversation forward of do your best to not demonize people, no matter what, in terms of, uh, or sh I should say dehumanize people. Yeah, yeah. Um, extra credit should watch American History X. Listen, I, I, I doubt they thought they did anything wrong in that video. They just sort of roll with the punches, because they've done it a couple of times where they've had videos where people are just like, the fuck was this? And they just keep going. Yeah, yeah they've. I know some of the writers and stuff have lashed out on Twitter. Yes. Uh, oh, okay, which, right. I didn't know about that. Which is always, always a great look when mm -hmm. you make... It, it, was, it was with the... It was the Nazi thing in particular that really blew up. Uh, where oh, they when were they writers. did not have, like, Nazis as, like, playable characters in, like, oh, a multiplayer God, yeah. game or something. Yeah, like, that was... Like, in Call of Duty World at War, when you can play... When you're playing one of the factions as, like, Russia versus Germany, that that's bad. Yeah, the, they want games to inform people that you're playing as a Nazi and a Nazi is a bad person in history. It's just like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's, it's, Wait, it's, it's treating your audience as a bunch of idiot infants, essentially. Goblin Slayer Episode 1 Choose Extra Credits Argument. I have not seen it. Uh, when all the races are good, then none of them are. Oh, uh, that's Syndrome for you, I guess. Syndrome. Uh, Incredibles is awesome. I was thinking, by the way, uh, I just had this random thought the other day. I guess I never thought about it before, but it was always there. I was just like, is Incredibles like heavily inspired by Fantastic Four? Uh, it's so, well, I mean, you can see how, right, in terms of a lot of the choices that were made. Like, the fact that there's a, four of them. 
Mr. Fantastic, uh, Violet's got the same powers as Sue Storm. Yeah. Um, there is four of them, and also I guess leaning hardcore into the 60s aesthetic. Yeah. Um, but I guess, yeah, you want to have the strong one, and I mean, I guess you could say that Mr. Incredible is kind of like, um... The thing, kind of. Kind of like the thing, and Dash is the one who is not like anybody else, really. Yeah, he's, he and Human Except Torf. his attitude is kind of similar to, yeah. to Johnny. Yeah, but they're different enough, and it's a great film. And oh, it's absolutely, it's just fantastic films that have existed. I was about <laughs> to say it's the best will. Fantastic Four film, uh, if one could put it into a genre. I just—it's just funny to me to think about because I think that's a great example of being like, you know, if someone said like I hate Incredibles, it's just a rip off of Fantastic Four or something. In the same way, people say that about like Joker to Taxi Driver, which could like they're clearly different. And I like that that happens. It's good. Inspiration. It definitely seems like that. When, I know, like, when it, uh, when Joker came out and we got the constant comparisons from everyone, I often wonder if that was just a thing that got spread by a few people and then it just took off like wildfire, wildfire, and then everybody just kept repeating it over and over. You wonder how many people really remembered these movies and saw both of these movies and legitimately think that they're super similar or if they know that's the safe thing to say because for us the the clearest closest connection was king of comedy yeah well so a lot uh, of people still do bring up king of comedy um <clears throat> and they like combo it up because there's elements but then it, to me it's just like you've gotten so broad that like yeah not fair anymore to say that it's yeah. copy any one thing. I think they're just they're like, very very distinctly the, different. Where's the appreciation for like dialogue? It's not copied dialogue. It's all new. So like dialogue's not just the easiest thing to write. You know, like the fact that he's done that. Dialogue's pretty hard. And then like the, how the scenes connect, what the history of this particular character is, and how it differs from so many other things. Like I don't know. It it, it always felt weird to me as a comparison, but yeah, you're right. And it, it reminds me of a certain YouTuber saying. Watched Blade Runner, wasn't a fan, watched it again, still wasn't a fan, just kept watching it mm. until I get it now. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I know I'm not allowed to not like this one. Exactly. It's, uh, when have you ever done that for a movie before? It's because you knew you couldn't like, uh, couldn't not like Blade Runner. Yeah. Which is funny, because I don't have that problem, uh, and a lot of people don't, because you can just end up going, I didn't like it. It's okay. Yeah, I recognize the value of the craft, even acknowledging that it wasn't for you, instead of pretending you like it when you don't. Um, <laughs> uh, we are now about to enter the stage of destabilization. Okay. Destabilization. Uh, Yuri Bezmenov warned us about demoralization. All right. I'm familiar. I'm so. I'm. I'm sort of familiar with who he was. Wasn't he was that like, like a... marketing material for Black Ops Cold War. <laughs> that guy. It was. Yeah, Bezmenov was like a like a communist propaganda political expert person who would explain how to subvert cultures and get them to do things. I, I'm not that familiar with him. I just sort of know of him, and I, I hear his name pop up here and there. But, I think people yeah, treat his was... clips as like scarily accurate with lots of how different things go. I think that's how, yeah, that's sort of the context where he pops up in. It's like, see, this I is what's happening, just... and this is what Yuri Bezmenov said you should try to do if you want to subvert culture and get people to think certain ways. I guess that's kind of funny, though, considering that that was in the context of the Cold War, which has been over for a long time. Like, you know. Well, I'm assuming that's the point, is that people. it's like, look, it's all happening again, or, you right. know, you know how yeah. it goes. With, like, you can yeah, take a lot yeah. of statements from a lot of different people and move them around mm -hmm. and be like, aha! Uh, yeah. Give man 2,000 years, he puts someone on the moon. Give woman 2,000 years, she's stuck on an island using sticks. This logic brought to you by the DCEU. Hey, they wanted to be that way, okay? They weren't interested in space travel. They were connecting with Mother Nature and her sticks. I feel like you got an opportunity to have the Amazons develop technology, so you've got their strength paired with technology, but that would be kind of cool, but... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know so, what the fuck they're doing with them lot next. You know, like, like what is, I, what is well, their fate? One Who of knows? Them three, yeah. What, what's going on? People kind of forgot about Game of Thrones. True. 
And the uh, new show is going to be out eventually. I'm not even sure what the date on that is. Um, we've never shown a good Batarian in any game. Batarian. Um, and the Gav yeah, Batarian. Are, yeah, the Batarians in, um, in, in Mass Effect. Mass Effect. And the Geth only have some differences between the factions in them. Kill the organics and don't. I mean, the Geth are a little... Like, the problem is that it's hard to talk about... Because the Batarians aren't, like, a... They're not a, man, a malevolent race, like, necessarily. I think that they were just more aggressive than a lot of other, um... Like, races in the Mass Effect series. That they were just more... Uh, yeah. More standoffish weather culture or whatever and the geth are robots um and i mean as we learn the geth aren't like a malevolent there, there's actually there's a lot that's um that they've sort of fallen victim to underneath the quarians i mean in mass effect 3 if the choice is between the geth and the quarians it's like damn the geth really got screwed over here you know legion's a good boy mm. The evil, oh, the evil team needs to be diverse. So diversity is evil? No, I just want, I just want representation in every environment all over the place. It gets, gets strange sometimes when it's like, please make the evil people diverse, but uh, I guess the same logic of you want to be able to be yourself in all places or something? Like it is weird of... to play Battlefield Five and see black women running around. It is it is very odd. Uh, well, presumably it's, it's in like good and bad problems. people, right? Or good team and bad team. It's not necessarily. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely on the Allied side. I think on the the Germans, it's the same way. I can actually double check. Real wasn't quick, uh? Because but... remember, the thing with Call of Duty World War Two was that you could fully customize your character, and so you could have, um, like a black woman fighting in the Wehrmacht. And it's just like, man, like, I don't know. Why, <laughs> just, at like, what point do you just not want to be a World War II maybe game? Maybe just don't have teams. Like, if you, if you don't do that, don't have there be those teams. There was a tweet the other day that was like, you can indeed pet the dog gun. Well, and I didn't see what game it was. There was someone, like, shooting the dog gun, and then there's, like, two dog heads on it, and you can pet it, and they're, like, really happy the animation's all fully done. I saw someone quote tweeted, and they said, this is a World War II game. And ah, I was just like, right. oh, well. Well... It, it is just one of those things is like in a modern military setting i think i think it's a lot easier to uh to it's easier in a have, modern like, setting yeah of, well yeah just it, it doesn't for as much as it is a video game like it's kind of hard to tell what kind of things will and will not pull people out of the experience and um and yeah, stuff like world war ii it's I think it's pretty everybody darn easy to tell. Everybody knows what World War II is, you know? Everybody knows what World War II is. With what, I think even with Battlefield 1, it was like... Because a lot of people weren't aware of, like, colonial armies and um, and how all of those... The French? Uh, yeah, the French have... Like, the weird one with Battlefield 1 was that the German Empire, their recon had, soldier uh, was a black guy. Germany did have um, African colonies. They lost a lot of them after World War One. That was part of the. Treaty well, they didn't Zion. during World War One. They had just like very to no connection with them because of blockades and stuff like that. Yeah, there were, yeah. no, there I were Algerians know. on the French army, which makes more sense. Um, but yeah, the the, the German the Empire getting the black sniper was really the bizarre had, to uh, see. The British had colonial forces, right? Because they would have had um, Indian yeah. uh, soldiers. Well, yeah, the, the, the medic has a, the medic wears a turban. He's sort of yeah. like a, like an Indian kind of. I guess that's what uh, I'm saying is like, Eastern. there's always ways, because the the one that everybody talks about, because it's so easy, Russian woman sniper, like it's a really not a hard sell at all. Yeah, if you're playing, yeah, the um, Russian faction, and I think it's only one of the Russian factions, because there's two, the, the reds and whites. Um, there are Russian. Long, you mean? Yeah, and yeah. so in Battlefield 1, there are Russian maps where it's like two different Russian uh, forces, I think. Oh, uh, I see. But uh, to, from my memory, I think that's how it is. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, this Battlefield 1 did it way better than 5. Uh, 5 is just like, you could be anything anywhere. And it's like, no, just stop. The this very, it's... It, it is definitely an uncanny peak that you have to get over in this game when you play five all the screaming women everywhere very strange the very multi-ethnic uh you know which is strange because if you play as uh, the japanese faction in battlefield five you can be a woman but you are limited you have to be asian if you're the japanese you have to be asian 
So the, where their limits start and stop is just strange. And I think one of the reasons is because the in part of the base game, I think it was only uh, the Brits and the, the Germans in the original. And so the Pacific War was added later. And so these later editions, maybe they started to tone down on how much you could customize, particularly the, the uh, Imperial Japanese Army. Because uh, you're only... You can only play as Japanese people. I, I, I think I would just say that hyper customization, regardless of which aspects you talk about, whether that's character creation or like outfits and stuff, just feels really odd in a World War One and World War Two game. I think that there's a little too much baggage. Um, it's the reason why Vanguard is so off-putting to me that you have like hero characters who have like these crazy takedown moves and these stupid skins. It's like this feels really odd. In, in a game that is based on like a real historical event uh for which there are still people who are still there are people who are still alive who were part of that i don't know there's a level of like i don't know maybe maybe like there is some value in historical authenticity absolutely that's the whole point of the yeah that's like the whole point if i play a world right. war ii game i want some like a, a decently authentic world war ii kind of well i mean you game. can make whatever you want uh ultimately sure. i guess i guess the problem is that it's um I feel like you might as well commit fully to, like, this is old history. This is, like, a wacky, crazy, like, world. As opposed to trying to be like, well, no, we're still doing, like, the super respectful, you know, real down-to-earth World War II game. But we also have characters running around with hockey masks and fucking, like, colorful gun skins. I just, I don't know. There's just something about it that's weird. And Cut. Battlefield Five is that it's that mix of both really historically authentic and incredibly inauthentic stuff. Um, a lot of the skins for uh, Battlefield now one did this pretty well, but Battlefield Two is a lot of the skins are very like authentic and very believable, and they're not the super is insane. That, um, and authentic yeah. skins are a lot harder to sell. Um, like if you gave people a bunch of skins and they were all relatively grounded, like. I don't know, maybe maybe it was like, oh, you just got like desert camo and then you got like a ghillie suit and you've got like a, uh, like a, if you had all of these, I think it's like, oh, that's more authentic and they could still look really cool. But what sells skins is like the Santa shit. It's like these crazy Halloween costumes. People want to look as bombastic as they can. Um, and Which so, is dope. It's, it's weird considering how many kinds of different things are see let me because uh, i've got it pulled up i did double check you cannot play as a you you cannot play as a black woman or a black character as the germans it's only whites um uh so let me show you like there's there's a lot this is both it's a positive and a negative of battlefield 5 and i think it's ultimately skews towards the negative but classes in other battlefield games would have very distinctive looks to them i think battlefield 1 is like the pinnacle of class and faction design in Battlefield because every army looked unique and all of their classes looked unique and you could tell who people were based off of what they looked like. And in Battlefield 5, you have an outfit system where your character has pants, torso, or like a like upper body, lower body, and a head. And you can customize them to look different ways, but these outfits are only restricted to the faction, not to the class. So you could have, if you wanted, you could have the same character as all of your classes for, like, the German army. And uh, so so you could have this, uh, you could have a character look like this, right? Which is all real stuff from World War, like the Winter Mask and the, all that sort of these outfits. But you could have that be every single class's appearance. So you can't tell a class by looking at them. You have to rely on, like, the icon that pops up over their head, which is not preferable to me just using in-game knowledge and recognizing soldiers based on their gear so it's like yeah sure there's a lot of really interesting and cool outfits in this game that look like they're totally believable as soldier outfits but they can be applied in so many different ways that it removes from a class dynamic um but i don't know we, we talked about this for a long time so. yeah Remember when games showed you their story and didn't tell you their story? And remember when they could be... They only told you their story in a game and not on social media, i.e. in the story. Just telling their stories in social media.
And this would be gross. like when a writer goes on and starts explaining the story because like they need to defend it. Or, or retweet someone defending their film because they had a yeah. great story. Fucking I can't believe that, that happened. Is so, it's insane. Like, yeah, like, oh, they get it. It's like, what are you doing? Like, what You'd never have to do that if there wasn't a problem. There's a problem. Exactly. Well, I, I, that's still one of those, nobody on set, nobody during the editing, like nobody, or either they did and you ignored them or they were too scared to. Like, I don't know. An unbelievable thing for film history, honestly. It is insane. I can't believe still that they did that. Of all I'm things glad to slip everybody by, hates that movie, though. You would not expect everybody it to be great, but there we are. Uh, fucking high top ended up loving the film. That's just funny. <laughs> I can't believe he used it's a xenomorph so for an example that evil by nature is not as good as evil by choice. The lack of any awareness is astounding. That is strange, considering the popularity of the xenomorph as a bad guy. Um, and plus, they're like they're more animals and not like a sentient race. Yeah. They're, they're they're an bestial. alien, but they're not. Yeah. yeah, they're not an intelligent species. Well, that's the but problem with the whole evil part. Not, yeah. It's like the xenomorphs don't consider themselves evil. No, they're just hunting to eat and then uh, breed. Like they're they're fulfilling their purpose. It's just that it doesn't align particularly well with our desire to continue living. Yeah, because when you zoom out enough, all of this is just bullshit. Like the, all the categories we've given to everything, right? We're all just things, stardust moving around in different positions. Like the idea that we go, yeah. hey, what you're doing there is evil. The tiger looks up, like, huh? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, of course. So. It, the fact that they would categorize the xenomorph is like, see, this is this is how it can go wrong. And they'd just be like, what are you, what? <laughs> I'm just getting confused. We, we don't we don't do the moral thing. We're not like complex enough. That we just, it's not a thing we do. I mean, even if even if they did, uh, like they all concluded they fucking hate humans and want to kill them all. I don't know. It's still fine with me. As a, as a potential race or whatever. But then again, I guess that's different because it's like not necessarily moral. They want to erase humans for whatever reason. They might have a reason. I don't know if they do. But yeah, as, as, as we've said, they seem to just be operating biologically. Like the, the eggs, for example. I don't think they're um they're like, oh, I can't wait to kill me a human. Also like yep, I, automatic. It's just doing, doing what I do. So extra credits is advocating for Haradrim genocide because they chose to fight with Sauron for money. Gotcha. Well, he said thing. he got it backwards in the terms of the whole, well, if they chose this way, then they're irredeemable. But if they're this way by nature, then he very odd phrasing of... I think it's that it was like... You said they shouldn't be able to be there unfair. that way. Yeah, like yeah it's but if they chose this, unfair. then you're free to slaughter them if they chose this. They chose wrong. And it's well, like really fucking weird shit. And they gave that example of like, the slimes arrive and, you know, you might just kill them because the game told you to, but this girl's gonna go up to them and say hi because, you know what? They deserve a chance to be friends or whatever. Just like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, like putting morals on a game that's just like level one fight two slimes and it's just like what if i don't no, want to fight them it's like that ain't the fucking slime. game like, is it i didn't give I mean, you an you option to talk to, to them fight. well yeah it's like I, I guess you could choose not to fight them but they'll kill you and then you'll respawn and then they'll kill you and then you respawn and they'll kill yeah, you yeah you're so. welcome to make your choice at yeah. any point <laughs> <laughs> i like that as almost like a do I have a choice to like split off into branching paths? It's like, I mean, you have the choice to die and then that will be the end of that What's path that, that it will reset. The second you can die believing that you did the moral thing, I guess. Um, it's the, uh, the second D&D uh, &D episode on Community where he's like, do we have to cross the bridge? Can I go behind it? Or does your will stop? And the Abed is like, <laughs> you can go back if you want. <laughs> like, it's obviously presented as like, the interest is crossing the bridge, but the player is like, yeah. I'm a smart ass and I would like you to make I a game that I, I want, yeah. you didn't even Being intend a to. Dick. Uh, hashtag slime lives matter. This extra credits video is riddled with bad faith arguments. Thank you for covering it and shredding those terrible points into atoms. Uh, no problem. I don't think we were far from the only ones that covered it though. It was like a... Very few people were okay with that video. It's like a tradition. Extra credits every once in a while they release a video that's so bad everyone covers Everybody it. Everybody hates it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Unfortunately, people like Extra Credits never had parents to give them a proper child morality, so they were never able to grow a, a proper adult morality and ethos. Calm down. I don't, <laughs> like, I don't know about that. I think that's, that. a, that's a bit of a reach. <laughs> like, yeah. Remember, it could, it, I mean, they might just yeah, I mean, they might just be bad people. Who knows? Well, I I I think it's fine. They hold this position, and they can hopefully be argued out I of it. I hope so. I fucking hope so. Stupid one. Uh, thank you both. Well, thank you for both getting through my shift and helping me with writing. It makes me sad when people criticize you for reviewing scripts when the script writers should have done that themselves before making the movie. What was the, the stat? It was like 90% of TLJ's first draft is in the final. I think they said yeah. that was a point of pride. <laughs> and yet it Big just oof. explained everything, yeah. Uh, but good to hear, good to hear. Um, okay, I'll read this all out as it's supposed to be, but then I'll tell you something funny about it. So, psychopathy is a personality Gen trait that is, in fact, genetic. Evidence shows Neanderthals were... We're, we're basically all psychopaths. Um, they spelt psychopaths with S-A-I-C-O. Wait, they spelled it how? So, they spelled Psycho, S-A-I-C-O. <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay, I'm that's very fun. amused by that. Um, as for psychopathy is genetic, I have no idea. As for Neanderthals being psychopathic? Got nothing on that either. I have no clue about any of that. Uh, I remember a fanfic where I read the protag did something to convince someone not to be a Nazi and could not bring herself to care or see it as a good deed because in her eyes the man was tainted. Okay. Gets into redemption and stuff, right? Or depending on what the guy did. Um, some people have their limits, I suppose. Uh, imagine how hard extra credits freak out over Von Stroheim. I don't know who Von Stroheim is. Neither do Sounds I. Sounds like a dish. Hmm. In regards to good in evil, modern philosophy has shifted towards the idea of moral relativism. Some, many people today have and do defend things like cannibalism or uh, oppressive practices in foreign nations. My dude, I think you'll find that there's been people defending that shit for all of time, somewhere. Is, uh, we got crazies all over Earth, unfortunately. But um, cannibalism? Like, I don't think you're going to find many people in the West defending capitalism. Uh, sorry, cannibalism. <laughs> cannibalism. Um, I thought Aragon did a good job of making the Urgles an enemy faction while also making them understandable and eventually turning them into allies. I legit can't even remember any of that. I was going to say, it doesn't... Ring any bells for me, I'm afraid. I don't know. Uh, people don't need to appease the universal standpoint to have moral force behind their views. If stuff is evil, it's evil. Screw the absolute cosmos. What do you even... People don't need to appease the universal standpoint to have moral force behind their views. What is the universal standpoint? I didn't think there was a universal standpoint. I thought that's... Part of the why this is such a complex conversation that's been going on for so long. Don't need to appease the universal standpoint. If I, I, I seriously, I can't even think of what that might refer to. I, yeah, I, I cannot decipher this question. And that is the last of the selection. Wow. The extra credits. Um, thank you so much for sending in your kind and intriguing messages as well as absolutely thank you supporting the show through the uh the donations and we appreciate it quite a bit all i've all i can really say now is uh thank you so much for listening for watching and uh we'll, we'll, we'll the three of us likely we'll see you in the next thing whatever it may be goodbye and good night everyone goodbye everybody bye 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 <laughs>